Hey everybody and welcome and um, we are here, we, I am here with uh, one of the best friends of this uh, channel and a dear friend to me personally, Glenn Zaleski, um, Hi, phenomenal pianist, educator, dad, and now <laughs> the featured artist of this transcription book, Glenn Zaleski, Solo Volume 2, transcribed by Michael Lukey and available at michaellukeymusic.com. If you don't know how to spell Lukey, it's like luck with an E at the end. But we'll post all that in a link. Glenn, welcome back. Hey, hey Jeremy. It's great to be back on your awesome channel. Uh, Thank thanks you. for having me. Of course. So tell me, like, what inspired this book? Just pure narcissism? Uh, no, I'm well, just I will <laughs> admit, I, I, I wrote about it a bit in the, in the notes. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, admittedly, narcissism was a part of a factor. <laughs> um, I, I just... Um, you know, but 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 more than that, I've done a lot of transcribing in my life. Um, I actually was a professional transcriber for for several years. I, I was a professional. I, I worked for Second Floor Music, and I transcribed piles and piles of piano solos for them uh, that are published on on their website or will be published. And then I also um, I, I worked for Jeffrey Keezer for about a year, and I transcribed his Heart of the Piano album. And those transcriptions are, are available. Um, so I, I've logged a lot of hours as a, as a transcriber, and I, and I I love the the art of transcribing. I, I I'm into it. And um, I thought, well, you know, maybe it would be cool if uh, I had some transcribed stuff out there. You know, selfishly, uh, I just kind of thought that would be cool. Um, and this solo volume volume two album was probably the first album. For me as a pianist that i felt would be transcription worthy i mean if you know other people maybe have transcribed stuff of mine and that's awesome and of course i'm flattered and that's super cool but um for this one you know that i wanted to put out there as a, as a book of music you know it's the first time that i felt it was you know really something transcription worthy so uh then i i i knew about michael's work from his his youtube presence and also from his um he transcribed Fred Hirsch's Songs From Home album. Mm. And I had got my hands on that book during the pandemic. And I just really loved the transcriptions because the way that Michael did the transcription is not just that they were accurate, they were extremely easy to read, which mm. is a different thing. Like, like mm -hmm. you know how it is when you're transcribing. It's one thing just to get the notes on paper in a way that you can read for your sake. But to actually make it look nice is a whole different creative art form and and michael's transcriptions were just super easy to read yeah and so i became a fan of his work and then i reached out to him to see if he would want to take on this project and he thankfully obliged and and now uh this book exists for for the world to enjoy <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a beautiful book to have around and yeah i can still relate i remember I don't know if I was gifted or if I bought when I was like a teenager, a book of Oscar Peterson transcriptions. And I was just so excited about it. I was like, great. And then it was just impossible to read the things. And mm -hmm. you know, part of that is he plays so fast, but part of that is you have to make an effort to be clear, you know, and to, to choose something that's for the reader instead of the most, you know, exactly accurate, you know, exactly. thing. Like it, it's really an art. And I, I do feel like this all, you know, it's difficult, but like, it's pretty playable. <laughs> um, yeah, it's difficult. It would be for like, I mean, you know, a, a beginner would have a hard time sitting down and playing one of these start to finish, but you know, passage by passage, it's, yeah, it's very playable and very, very readable. And great for study uh, as well. That's a lot well. to do with Michael. Like, like really, yeah, really, I hope so. really lovely. Um, so I'm curious, since we're talking about transcription, I feel like a question I really get quite a lot is, you know, is it okay to, is it productive to read a transcription, to buy a transcription? And, mm -hmm. you know, for an aspiring pianist, how should that be balanced with doing mm -hmm. your own transcribing? Um, what, mm -hmm. Like, I have my own kind of answer to that, but I'm curious what you tell somebody who's, who's wondering about something like that. I think that's a really great question. And actually, I mentioned that in the notes to this book, too, because it's an important, really should have read the notes. important question. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, if you'd like to read the notes, the notes are on my blog. So anyone who's watching, you can go to my blog and read the notes or you can buy the book, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but that's an important question. I mean, 
Of course, it's better for people to do their own transcriptions instead of reading them out of the book. I mean, nobody would ever, nobody in their right mind should ever argue otherwise. Like, if you really love Glenn Zaleski's Solo Volume 2, of course, it's, it would be better if you transcribed it yourself, you know, for sure. But let's say you're, you know, 14 and you like Oscar Peterson and, you know, you really like uh, his intro on My One and Only Love from We Get Request. You, you're not going to sit down and just learn it by ear, no matter how much you love it. So, um, it's, I think if you can't learn something by ear, in that case, it's better to have a teacher. If there's a teacher around that can show you, that's great. But what if you can't learn it by ear and you don't have a teacher? Well, then if you can read it out of a book, then I think that's actually super useful. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm not opposed to reading transcriptions out of a book at all. I, I wouldn't say that it's better than doing it by ear but as a starting point i mean you got to start somewhere it's super unrealistic to expect expect a beginner pianist to just listen to a recording they like and learn it by ear you just can't i mean piano is too hard to to hear all that all that so uh, yeah and i think that's something that comes up a lot is like in so many of the pianists that we love, their solos are so technical. <laughs> and this is one of the yeah, things, of you know, I've, I've been including transcription projects in, in my in my books. And, you know, you almost have to, like I'm just searching for piano solos that aren't so filled with double time or so filled with a lot of chords that are gonna be really hard to transcribe. Um, and oftentimes I have my students like transcribe pian uh, horn solos for the first yeah. five or six even transcriptions before they necessarily get to a to a piano solo because just the pianos that we love have this incredible technique and many are not shy about using it <laughs> yeah and i think it's it's okay to to to, to as a starting point to uh, learn from a book for, for me i had some transcription books when i was in high school that were super influential to me and they were really important um there is a transcription of the dave brubeck album brubeck plays brubeck Mm. And uh, I had those transcription books. I bought them on eBay and I learned a ton from them. I had Bill Dobbins transcriptions of Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. To be honest, there's no way when I was 14 or 15, I just couldn't have figured this out. <laughs> I just couldn't have figured that out, you know, and I don't, but, but I had the book and then it helped me. And then next time I heard something similar to that, I, I you know, I could, could hear it some of the language. Yeah, 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 totally. And so, so you've already kind of referenced it, but I'm curious, like, what you're hoping, what your dream would be for this book, other than to make you those millions of dollars, you know, that you're hoping <laughs> for. Uh, it's the reason we're all in this game. Um, <laughs> are you kind of hoping that people will play the pieces from front to from beginning to end? Are you hoping that they'll do some analysis? Are you hoping that they'll pick out a little passage and try to get a little bit of Glenn Zaleski in their in their style? Do you, do you have like a particular <coughs> dream or wish? Well, yeah, all all of the all of the above, and um, I'm actually I'm glad that you mentioned all of these things because uh, I'm getting to. I, I talk about all these very important questions actually in the notes of the book, so you should all read the notes. And, and now I'm giving you my own like uh, version of it. Uh, what I hope for with this book is, you know, as a, as a transcriber myself and as a pianist and as someone who's consumed transcriptions uh, and someone that still consumes and does transcriptions. Um, you know, you, you can be inspired by, I've been inspired by notes that I've read off a page before. I mean, like this, you know, I'm still inspired by that. I read that out of a book, you know, whatever, 20 years ago, and it really had an impact. Not that I ever sit down at the piano and play that exactly, but it, but, uh, you know, it, it helped me and it inspired me. And if this book can give some seed of inspiration to anybody out there, then that's really all I hope for. Now, if, if, if that means that you play the ink start to finish and you play it like a little piano piece, that's awesome. If, if you learn one chord and that one chord inspires you, then that's awesome too. I mean, however, however you're able to absorb some inspiration from this book, that's, that's really all I, all I hope for. Awesome. So, okay, you said you did something interesting and you went back kind of to prove that it could be done and you learned to play at least one of these from the book. I think you said you learned yeah. to play Black Orpheus. Yeah, I did learn to play Black Orpheus. And actually I made a video of it right right here, a very casual video. And it's, it, I'm going to put it up on YouTube soon. I just haven't gotten around to it. Do you want to give us a, a little excerpt? I'll, I can show the, uh, the book 
here, and you don't have to play the whole thing, but if you just yeah, want to give us a little taste a little of, of what it what it kind of yeah sounds like and looks like, we'd appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Well, I guess you can. You, will you scroll along for me? I will scroll along. It's a little bit clunky, but I will do my best here. All right. All right. Here we go. So yeah, this is Black Orpheus. This is the this is the ink. that's just that's that's it yeah that was so fun so to fun. watch to watch along with um because it just gives me so many pianistic ideas i hear moments where like your insides are together in really creative ways i hear some like little octave doublings and one of the things that's really like looking just leafing through this book just like looking casually one of the things that's really stunning to me is how few times you're ever playing like more than two notes at once in the left hand your left hand is so broken up um mm -hmm. and i I've, I've been calling i've, I've been talking about a, an approach with students that i call drumming and I, I don't know that i would call this drumming but just kind of separating out that you know playing what would be like a a full voicing and then you know breaking it up rhythmically in these like really interesting fluid ways um like, I just noticed that with so many of your straight A's, with Anna Maria, with Black Orpheus, with so much of your straight A playing. Like, it's so interesting to look at. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. I'm really, it's really interesting that you noticed that. I mean, something that I noticed one day is that, like, this sounds good, but then it also sometimes sounds nice if I go like this. <laughs> or, I don't know, this sounds good, but if I go like this, and I play part of it short and part of it long, it's like I get two parts. You know, I, I get two parts for, for the price of one. It kind of gives the rhythm a little boost. Um, you know, if I see this chord, any, any way that you break it up, uh, you can get a lot of mileage with one piece of information. And you are very astute to notice that because I think if you look at this book, you can see that super clearly. And that's definitely not, not a secret. I mean, that's that's how I think of it uh, oftentimes. Yeah, and there's like, I, I really appreciate that there's counterpoint everywhere. There's all of these, you know, little melodies, like even just looking um, right, right here, if I can. You know, that little alto oh, voice, yeah. uh -huh. you know, um, and I, I just admire the way it comes in and out. I feel like oftentimes when I'm playing, I'm thinking like, I'm going to do a contrapuntal section. <laughs> you know, I'm going to think about four <laughs> voices. But with you, I just hear this, like, um, you know, these little moments where it becomes a little bit more contrapuntal and then mm -hmm. kind of sinks back into the texture. And the left hand becomes a little bit more contrapuntal. Um, and, you know, I know that you've done a lot of contrapuntal practicing. And I love, mm -hmm. I love the way it comes out of your playing because it's just different than mine. And that always thrills me. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's like a balancing act. I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm keeping track of, uh, you know, if I just heard a lot of eighth notes in the right hand maybe i want to have some eighth notes in the left hand or if i just spent a lot of time in this register maybe i want to spend more time in this register or, you know like 
just just kind of to or if I always put the melody here, then maybe maybe the next time I want to put the melody here. I mean, just just kind of like a a balancing act, just to kind of let the listener know that you know I've considered all the options and I'm not doing one thing just because that's the only thing I can do. It's 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 kind of like it just it just a, a, a balancing act. You know, you keep keep the listener guessing with 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 that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very actively thinking about that. I think you could see it. The cool thing about seeing this note, the notes on, on the paper is that you can literally see it. You don't even have to yes. hear it. You know, you can, you can just, and for some people who are visual learners, I think that's actually really helpful, which is maybe an interesting point while, while we're here talking about this. Okay. I think in jazz music, sometimes there is sort of a, a sentiment. There's like a sen reading and hearing. In, in mm -hmm. jazz music, sometimes there's a there's it's as if those things are mutually exclusive. Like the mm. jazz musician might be against reading because they mm. might think if you read something, you're not hearing it, mm. um, and that's completely not true. In fact, the only reason somebody is able to read well, ideally, is because they hear it before they play it. You can look at these notes. You don't need to have perfect pitch. I mean, I don't have perfect pitch, but you you can look at the notes and hear them bef before you you play them, and I think that's a good thing. Um, so like reading and hearing are not mutually exclusive. So maybe that's sort of a defense of a written transcription. I guess in defense of reading, I'm throwing that out there. <laughs> reading is not cheating. Reading, reading well is actually hearing. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, someone looking at this book, they might be able to notice things on the paper that they didn't notice just listening to it. Um, but that's not cheating. That's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then the next time you hear something similar to that in some other piano music, you'll recognize it. Mm -hmm. So, so I would actually encourage everyone to explore all different representations of music because it all it all helps your your, your overall ability to hear. Um, mm -hmm. So, in defense yeah. of reading, that's my little no, that's, that's my that's little interesting. Uh, in defense of reading. Yeah. yeah. Um... I wasn't planning on asking you this many questions, but I'm just getting, <laughs> I'm getting stimulated by the reading um, and I want to put this up larger. And I, I wonder how much you've thought about this. Um, do you have a attitude about downbeats? Like, do you think about trying to put the downbeat, you know, do, I, I can tell that you don't do this, but one, you know, approach to downbeats is to try to put it in the bass most of the time. Some people try to really hide the downbeats. Some people really try to play across the bar line, which is a lot of the sense that I get from your, um, from, from your playing is this kind of really long phrase. But do you think about mm -hmm. downbeats and trying to either make them apparent or make them or hide them or vary, sometimes be on the end of four, sometimes be on the end of one? Or is that something that, that occurs wow. to you? I've never considered that. That's super interesting. I mean, my, my, my instinct is to say I'm pro downbeat. <laughs> I like, I like, I like downbeats. However, I guess that my also, my instinct is also to favor, um, long, long phrases. So if I was going to play Black Orpheus, I might not want to go. sound nice too but my tendency yeah. might be to maybe maybe i won't play those roots i'm gonna i'm gonna play a big downbeat here so maybe mm -hmm. those four bars maybe that i was thinking more like i wanted there to be a downbeat but not on every small subdivision maybe like every four bars but I've never really thought about it. I, but I, I think that's how I tend to open up the rhythm is, is um, have downbeats, but in longer phrases. If that makes sense. Yeah, totally. No, that's just one thing that occurs to me as I study the score. And I, you know, I want to figure out how you get this sense of every rhythm, every measure is so rhythmically different, right? You know, mm -hmm. I think as we teach and, and for me, especially, if, you know, you're not playing this really as a bossa nova per se. Mm -hmm. It's more of a straighty ECM yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as yeah. I think about creating a rhythmic structure, I'm thinking kind of like a repeated rhythm of some sort. Yeah. But yours, you know, 
I feel like when I play it, I have this kind of like, there's always a duck, 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 oh, duck, duck, duck. And I might, you know, I think I'm, pretty sound too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty crafty about changing the order and, you know, where the highest and lowest is. But I feel like it kind of mm-hmm. always has this similar groove. But you you just really go across the bar line in these in these beautiful ways. Um, so that's what well, I do. Yeah, I definitely think about, I, like, if I was going to play this, I always put myself in, like, a, in a grid of subdivisions. So mm-hmm. in, in this case, the subdivisions are kind of slow, but it's, you know, I, I can hear this the whole time. It's actually quite slow, you know. Da, 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 da. kind of i hear this the whole time and then it, you Absolutely. know i, I yeah. kind of grab this or grab this or grab it over here or you know you just kind of grab grab it wherever you feel like you know that's i guess yeah. that's how i conceive of it yeah and, and how then i got know? to sing for you that's nice <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and i you know i think the other thing that i know that you're obsessed with and i think most good pianists are are the the pianism of yeah Oh, yeah. This kind of thing, and it was funny. I was just like reading through Anna Maria poorly before you, before you got here, and I was like, yeah. "I don't sound like Glenn." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so I know that you've you've studied like voicing a lot, and mm-hmm. when I say voicing yeah. in this context for the audience, I'm not talking about you know how you organize the notes. I'm talking about how you give volume to certain notes. So right. if we're trying to get that Zaleski sound, <laughs> other than listening really intently to the album, are there certain things that we might be paying attention to i mean i'm sure the melody is being brought out but other yeah. kind of other things because one of the things i well, just heard you do was play some notes that went above the melody really beautifully oh yeah not a lot of yeah. not a lot of jazz pianists do yeah that's i'm always working on that because that's such a cool texture it makes it sound like you have more hands than you actually do which is cool mm. um well okay i'm, I'm gonna say one thing about Anna maria first like, this is maybe interesting whoever okay. watches uh uh, th- th- there's a groove in Anna Maria that sounds like this. Three, four, one, two, three, four. And that, that kind of goes the whole time. That's the, that, that's kind of set. And that rhythm is lifted from a, a Keith Jarrett left-hand pattern that he plays a lot in his career. Uh, but I got it from the song Treasure Island. If you ever listen to the Keith Jarrett mm. song Treasure Island, it sounds like this. It's a, it's really it's really. Have you heard that before? Do you know that? Yeah, I don't I don't know it well. I've I've heard it. Yeah. So, anyways, it's a great piece that everyone should, should go listen to um, but I took this left hand but then I just played Anna Maria instead of Treasure Island and then as far as like the, the layers um, you know this is that's kind of just one thing, and it's definitely on the quieter side. And then the melody is a tier above that. You can kind of play it with one finger. It's not even about the fingering, really. And then sometimes with the right hand, if I have space, just kind of fill in the bottom with some some kind of chord so it's kind of three three layers i guess is how i'm thinking of it where this is one part the melody is another part and then anything under the melody is is a is a third part yeah awesome it's it's the groove is less obvious to me visually until Mm -hmm. i hear you play it and then it's like, oh, boom, 
kataka. <laughs> yeah. Know? Like I could, you know I could really like? feel the yeah. groove. Um, and it's, it's like once I, drums, well, now that I look, yeah. it's totally obvious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it was not obvious because, you know, there's those little variety, there's those little variations yeah. between measures and Michael's uh, so accurate. Um, mm -hmm. That, that we kind of, you know, there's these notes in parentheses and it's like, oh, sometimes it's tied, sometimes it's not tied. Um, also, the way I'm playing it is not exactly right. The way that I just played it sure, for you sure, now right. on the piano was more like, for, just for demonstration just purposes, general, it was yeah. hyper literal. But I think there's two reasons. One, when I recorded this, I was just getting used to it. So I wasn't as comfortable with it as I am now. Uh -huh. And two, I'm just not being so literal with it when I'm really playing it because, you know, you, you don't need to yeah. hammer it in anyone's You're head. You're making art. <laughs> yeah, I'm making art. <laughs> right. No, but it's, it's obviously there. I, I, just as I was reading it, it didn't like it didn't settle into that groove. So that's really yeah. that's really great. And obviously these are meant to be experienced while you listen to. Yeah. Solo, yeah, yeah. solo piano volume two. Yeah. yeah. Um, Glenn. I think I could talk to you forever, but I think we better we better end this now. If anybody's still watching out there, um, but yeah. again, uh, go go ahead. Uh, so Glenn not only has his transcription book that's beautiful, but uh, his Patreon is just one of like the coolest things uh, to be able to hang with Glenn on his Patreon. Um, do you want to say anything about that? Oh yeah, um, if if you're interested in any of these things that we've talked about, then you would definitely love um, my Patreon page because. Everything that I've put on YouTube and Instagram and, and all that stuff really only scratches the surface. Um, and especially this year, I've, I've, I've got uh, a, a bunch of really cool stuff coming up on Patreon, including the, the music from this solo volume two session. Um, this is six tracks that I compiled from videos that were originally recorded uh, during the pandemic. And there's actually 36 songs total from the so solo volume two sessions all filmed. And they're all on Patreon. So if you really like Solo Volume 2, you can hear, you know, six times more solo piano recordings um, on my Patreon page. There's just a lot there. So I think I think you might enjoy it if you've enjoyed any of this stuff. Awesome. Um, great. And you'll send me links to all that. We'll post them in the description. Um, oh, yeah. And th this is available at michaellukeymusic.com. Get exactly, your copy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful book. You, you'll be happy to own it. And if you're overseas, you can get it on Amazon too. Awesome. Bye. All right, Glenn. Well, thank you for doing this. It's always super fun to hang with you. Yeah. And, hey, uh, thank you. Thank I hope you. Hope you sell a million journey. copies. <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're getting there. One. Oh, one I at bet. A time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks.